Hey y'all, it's Megan. If you're returning to my channel, welcome back. And if you're new, welcome aboard. So today is going to be kind of a story time, kind of a Jungle Cruise experience thing, kind of working at Disney. I don't know really what we're gonna categorize this as, but uh, we are talking about lightning. We're gonna talk about a couple of my skipper interactions related to lightning. I know it's really specific, but that's what we're talking about today. So I've mentioned before that the Jungle Cruise does not operate when there is lightning in the area for obvious reasons. It's a boat ride in the water, metal boats, lightning, not a good mix. So I have talked about before some of the stuff that we do when we are shutting down the Jungle Cruise um, and I have talked about specifically the lightning situation and I will link a video right up there that I did a couple of months ago where that was one of my like frequently asked questions was uh, pertaining to lightning. But today's video is specifically about some interactions I had with my fellow skippers when there were some storms in the area. The first thing I'm going to mention is just really small. I have no footage of it, but you've probably seen some footage float around on the internet. If you look, you can find it very easily of skippers who were performing the Jungle Cruise on the dock. I don't know for certain that we were the first ones in 2012 to do that, um, but I had never seen it before anywhere and none of us really knew what we were doing but that was the thing that we started doing when it was really really raining and for the guests that stayed under the canopies and in the queue we would kind of act out parts of the jungle cruise someone would be on the dock radio and they would tell the jokes and skippers would come by and do the different things you know we had someone who would climb on someone else's back as the trap safari we would be butterflies and wave our wings and we would do all of that kind of stuff and like I said, I have no footage of us doing it. It's been almost 10 years at this point. Uh, but there is footage if you want to see some of the other skippers who have carried on that tradition. Like I said, don't know if we were the first ones, uh, but it's something fun that skippers have been doing now for several years. They just kind of bring the Jungle Cruise to life on the dock. Something that is a common theme with cast members in general uh, is language barriers. When you are working at Disney, you interact with people from all over the world. Lots of visitors come from lots of different countries and you may not speak the language that they speak. A lot of people do notice the name tags that have the proficiencies and say like, hey, I speak Portuguese or I speak Spanish, French, whatever. Um, and they will go to those cast members and they will know that, hey, I can interact with this person in my native language. Um, but some people, you know, there may not be a cast member at that particular location who speaks the language of that the guest needs. So they try to communicate however they can, just like any of us would in a country that didn't speak English. So one day the Jungle Cruise is shut down for lightning. And uh, since that's what we're talking about, the Meg, uh, the Jungle Cruise is shut down for lightning. And one of my friends was out front at Greeter, just kind of standing under the awnings and anyone who came down and was like, hey, is it running? He would be the one to say, no, sorry, Jungle Cruise is closed right now. And you know, why don't you go enjoy an indoor attraction? There's the Tiki Room and there's the Pirates and blah, 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 blah. So this family comes and they were asking him, you know, is it closed? but they spoke Spanish and they did not speak English and he did not speak Spanish. Um, so they were having a really hard time understanding like why, because a lot of people, English speaking, non-English speaking, a lot of people are like, it's just rain, it's no big deal, I don't care if I get wet, so like, can we come in? Um, and I think that was where the, you know, miscommunication was happening. They just were like, I don't care if we get wet, like, can we ride? And he was like, no, you can't, like, we're not operating at all. And they didn't understand why. Um, and he was trying to pantomime lightning. He's trying to explain without being able to speak the language. He was like, um, it's it, the, the, the lightning, uh, it's, it's, and they're just like, yeah, we know it's raining, dude. <laughs> like, obviously and he's like no the um and he like makes a lightning bolt with his hand and he's like bang bang and they're I know this man and I know that he had the the nicest of intentions he was trying his very best but they were like this dude in the khaki sack has lost his mind um I just so happened to get rotation and be sent up there with him and I see this interaction like as I'm walking up I see him doing his bang bang and everything I was like what is happening? So I walked up and I was like, what are, what are you doing? And he says, I'm trying to explain that there's lightning and, and I don't know how, how to, to, I don't know what lightning is in Spanish. And uh, for some reason, that one word of Spanish stuck in my brain and I was like, I do. So I just said that one word in Spanish, I just said relampago and they were like, oh. And that, that one word, my one Spanish word that I pulled out of the nether regions of my brain. Uh, they were like, okay, thanks, and they left. Not that I am claiming to be excellent with Spanish. 
far from it. I am still working on it. <laughs> Hashtag Duolingo. Uh, I'm, try I'm trying here to get better with my Spanish because I would eventually like to be able to, you know, in a situation like that, be able to actually communicate more effectively other than just like saying one random word to people and hoping that they, they get the idea based on my limited knowledge of the language. You know, you learn languages and like the first thing you learn is like how to say where's the bathroom or can I have some, you know, whatever. You, you learn like basic phrases that are going to, if you're stuck in a country and you don't speak the language, things that are going to help you out and apparently lightning is one of those that you should know. This is my favorite thing about lightning at Disney World um, and it is something that I still do today and I will explain. At Disney I've mentioned that there is a certain distance that the lightning has to be before they will reopen attractions that are outdoors. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the distance is but it was like 20 minutes from the you know when you see the last lightning bolt it would be at least 20 minutes if you didn't see another one before you could open. So between lightning bolt, you know, if you had a flash of lightning, the 20 minute timer has been set. If we don't see lightning again for 20 minutes, then we're probably gonna be reopened. We'll probably get the call and they'll say lightning is far enough away, you can reopen attractions. Uh, so I'm bringing you into my inside joke with my friend. So I would see the skipper and I would see the lightning and we'd be standing out there and he and I would just like make eye contact and go 20 minutes. And it meant 20 more minutes until we can open up at least like it could be longer but at least 20 more minutes until we open up and it started off as just like announcing it like hey 20 minutes don't know if everyone saw there was lightning and the two of us just made it our little thing I don't know why but now I make my husband do it so we'll be just at home in the house and we'll see lightning and one of us will scream 20 minutes we don't have anything that we need to be opening up or closing down. We are not one-on-one. -on -one. We are sitting on the couch watching 24. Uh, but we still scream 20 minutes every time we see lightning. And it's one of those things that I just, I don't know if I'm ever gonna be able to not say it. You ever have an inside joke that it doesn't really make sense? And even if you explain it, like I'm explaining it to you here and y'all are probably going, Megan, this is not funny. I don't know why you're telling us this, uh, but it's hilarious to me. <laughs> and I still do it and no one else outside of you know me and my couple of friends and my husband know what I'm talking about but uh, I still do it every time don't know why but I'm gonna keep doing it so those are my skipper stories for today lightning edition if it's interesting to y'all to hear some of the things that like the interactions with my co-workers uh, if that's as interesting to you as you know story times with like guest interactions and stuff let me know is it is that fun for you guys to hear like just you know random behind the scenes inside joke kind of stuff that skippers did. Um, you know, obviously I can't speak for every skipper, I can't speak for every cast member, but this is just kind of stuff that I experienced and how we passed the time when we were backstage or not working uh, and just, you know, made working at the most magical place on earth just a little more fun as if it wasn't already fun. So do you guys have any like weird inside jokes with your friends that you want to share with us? Like something that you just scream randomly and no one else understands, but you know, and it's funny to you. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye y'all.